We need the Americans that live in California to have their eyes open once and for all. Now, let me, let me look at you. You don't get to decide what Jesus taught. You only get to read it and believe it. You don't have a private opinion on the matter. You don't hijack it for your group. You don't steal it for your movement. Because once you violate what he said, you're a liar and a fraud. Now, the Bible says this. You don't have the right. He said, do you think that I've come to establish unity? I have not come to establish unity, but to bring a sword. And, and you say Jesus is divisive. Thank God that Christ is divisive. Look at me. He divides you from crystal meth. He divides you from suicide. He divides you from hatred and death and fear. I'm glad he divided. I'm glad the sword of the Lord came down and broke the chain that held my soul to the devil. Somebody help me love Jesus a little bit right now. Jesus is not a salad bar where you pick this, this is what I want on my plate, but I don't want this part. You either take what he says at face value, accept everything he taught, unlimited, total, contextually correct. You accept what Christ said, or you're lying to yourself. I had a lady say, there are many ways to God. And if I'm sincere, I'll find the truth. I said, okay, try this. You're sick and you need medicine blindfold yourself open the medicine cabinet and when you've got perfect sincere feelings you should be able to open any bottle you want and the pill will work truth from christ cannot be compromised no 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 you cannot lie about our jesus anymore you can't have him. He's not yours. I don't like the idea of hell. You don't have a choice. A man said to me, a loving God would never put anyone in hell. And I looked at him the way a raccoon stares at truck headlights. I said, you know the sin you just committed? The Bible calls it idolatry. Because it says they made God in their own image. God is an eternal being. I'm looking right in this camera because God just told me somebody's watching that needs to hear this part. God is an eternal being. He doesn't think like you. He doesn't feel like you. What you're saying is if I were God, I wouldn't like there to be a hell. But you're not God. And so I love you, Jesus, because you said love your neighbor and do unto others as you would have them do unto me. But when Christ mentions hell, I can't accept that. You can't have one without the other. Now, he said this, I will deliver you. He's a deliverer. How many of you believe Christ is a deliverer? Let's, how many of you believe Christ is a deliverer? Matthew 12 says, all manner of evil spoken against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven. Christ came and explained, I'm here to destroy the works of evil. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go after modern religion for a minute. Give me a break. If you believe in the Jesus that allows people to have coffee, overhead projectors, big screen, skinny jeans, and fog machines, but you don't preach repentance, help me somebody. And you don't tell them about the blood that was shed on the cross. And you say, I don't want to offend the outsider. And you hand somebody a cup of coffee when they walk into church with a look in your face that said, Bay, you better drink this if you want to live and be awake for the whole deal. But I want you to understand this. We serve a fiery God, an awesome God, a glorious God. He is holy.
How many of you believe we need to have a holiness? He said, this is why I came. I came to set at liberty, to recover, to proclaim, to liberate, to set free. And here's how it reads in 1 John 3, 8. The disciple John wrote this about Jesus. He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. One day I was watching TV and the preacher who had a, a grin, a big smiley face preacher telling the people, Jesus went about doing good. I wanna quote it, Acts 10, 38. Jesus went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil for God is with him. I want you, the atheist, to look at me. Last night we heard a miracle of a woman's body was standing right here on a recently broken ankle, dancing like she was going for a prize. She had that broken ankle create a blood clot that went up her leg to her heart, lungs, and her brain. She got mysterious pain in her shoulder. The doctor told her in the month of June that she had almost died three times in her life. And you sat here and you knew I didn't know her. And I began to describe what was going on in her shoulder to the glory of God. I began to talk about how she had almost died three times. And I told her about her leg, her heart, her lungs, and her brain. And you saw her standing here, not healed by a man, not healed by Mario, but healed by the Son of the living God, Jesus Christ. You know, I'm going to say it. I'm going to see if I get some help. This is real. This is real. The church is not supposed to be without miracles. Listen to me. You, sir, you mega church pastor, watch out. You may be a brilliant stand-up comedian, but the devil does not respect entertainment. He only respects the anointing. He's not afraid of your education. He's not afraid of your reputation. He's not afraid of how many watch you on YouTube. He doesn't care about what you can say and how you can move an audience. The only thing the devil fears is what Jesus stood up and said, I have been filled with the Holy Spirit and I'm anointed to destroy the works of the devil.